Hello, uh, as promised, I promised I'd give you as a church an update uh, because it's been 10 weeks of uh, lockdown and we believe as a leadership that we're coming into a new season of lockdown and I really wanted to talk to you about what does this new season look like. I also wanted to just almost reflect a bit on what season one, the last 10 weeks have looked like and what will season two that we're walking into look like as well. Um, there's something that I read recently by uh, an, an American leader called Andy Stanley, and he said, we can't provide certainty in this climate, but we can provide clarity. And that's the whole point of this. I don't know necessarily what decisions the governments are going to make going down the line, but I can at least tell you where we are now and what we can do now, which I think is better than nothing. So I'd rather give you some clarity of what is season two all about. The last 10 weeks have been manic. So first of all, let's talk a bit about season one. The language for season one that Liz and I really felt was respond and engage. Why? We felt over the last 10 weeks we've had to respond to the crisis, respond to the lockdown. What did we do? We set up online gatherings within a week. We set up Zoom calls, we did card writing, we've done WhatsApp groups, contact rotors. We responded to what was going on around us. And we believe that we've done all we can to make sure that we've tried to keep as many of you connected to each other and to what's happening as Riverside as much as possible. I want to thank everyone who has engaged. Thank you if you've wronged someone. Thank you if you've written to someone. Thank you if you've texted someone. Thank you if you've done shopping for someone or done a prescription for someone. Thank you if you've written to us, if you've texted us, if you've rung us, if you've sent us the cards and the pictures for the service. I want to thank you because you have responded to us as we've tried to respond to you in this crisis as well. We haven't just wanted to respond though, but we wanted to make sure that we were engaging with you. So what did we do? We set up uh, six live environments. We've had a Sunday service that's live, two weekly live prayer gatherings. And Liz and I have been uh, putting out there the opportunity for three live Zoom calls a week, six live environments. And then on top of that, to help with the whole engagement, we've had interviews, we've had update videos, we've had Bible teaching, all to encourage us in how we've engaged. And what's amazing is, we all have been. We have managed in the last 10 weeks through season one to respond to the crisis, respond to each other, and we've kept engaging as well. But we believe we're entering a new season, season two of lockdown. The words for this season would be engage and develop. But before I go into these two words more, I want to talk to you about the building. Why? Because I've had so many questions about it. OK, so the building. The government might be easing lockdown, but as we enter season two, I want to tell you straight off, there are no plans in season two to reopen the building. There are no plans to reopen the building in season two. At this stage, as I put this out, the only people that are allowed to gather is six outside in someone's garden, which would have been lovely over the last 10 weeks, but as we record this, it's boxing it down with rain outside. Timing's everything. When reopening the building, there are four things that we believe we have to consider to be able to open. Number one, can we open? Does the government and Elim say, as a place of worship, we can reopen our doors? Number two, can we keep people safe if we reopen the, the building? Number three, Will the gathering inside the building be better than one that we can provide online? Will it be a better experience? And number four, can we sustain gathering or will it lead to burning? At the moment, we haven't even passed the first test. At the moment, the government and Elin both say we can't open our doors. So we've already not passed on the first one. But even if and when the government and Elin says we can reopen our doors, before we start gathering, we need to address the other three tests as well. At the moment, uh, when we will, are we going to be able to reopen the building, it looks like social distancing will still have to be in, uh, enforced in the building. 
That means it doesn't matter what meeting happens in the building, we have to stay at all times two metres away from each other. With social distancing in place in this main room at Dark Lane, we can only get 20 people in the building. That would mean for us to do a Sunday service for everyone at Riverside, we would have to hold between five and seven services on a Sunday. Each service would require a massive deep clean before it and a massive deep clean after it as well so that the people in the building are kept, kept safe. And then actually the experience that people would get wouldn't be a great experience. They wouldn't be allowed contact and close prayer for each other. There would be restrictions on where we could go and what we could move. There wouldn't be any drinks served. There wouldn't be that time for personal close engagement. And also, potentially, as they are in some countries in, in Europe, not allowed to sing. So that would mean 20 people would have to sit in this room socially distancing and just watching what we do. At home, you'd be able to have your own space, sing, engage with the service. Season two, we'll see the leadership team constantly meeting and speaking and talking behind the scenes to see what ministries and what things we can do if and when Elim and the government says we can open the building. But as I say, there are no plans to open it in season two. And even in season three, we may be able to reopen the building for certain ministries or certain things in the week, but that may not include the Sunday service. But we are meeting and planning regularly to see what we can do in season three. So that will go on behind the scenes. But what will you see and what will we see together in season two? Season two is all about two things for us, engage and develop. We don't want to just keep responding. It's been 10 weeks of responding and it's hard work. We want to actually engage with you continually and develop what we're doing. We want to look forward to where we're going. We want to engage with you as much as possible. What does this mean? This means that we're going to keep churning out our recorded content. We're going to keep giving you things like the Monday Mystery Meeting, the Bible Notes, the updates, all the pre-recorded stuff. We're going to keep putting out online. Why? Because we want to engage with you as much, much as possible. But what's brilliant about these pre-recorded items is the fact that we are aware that more and more of you are going back to work. More and more of you potentially are sending your children to school and that means more and more of you have less free time. The great thing about the pre-recorded materials is we can still engage with you, but you can watch them whenever you want. You don't have to watch them in the moment when the email lands or when you see it on Facebook. You can choose to watch it in a couple of days when you know you've got some time. There is no pressure to watch them. We've been aware that people's lives are starting to get more fuller again. And the last thing we want to do is to make people feel guilty that they, can, that, that they are missing things. But what we don't want to do is stop engaging with you because of that. So we're going to keep churning out these videos to engage with you, to keep you updated, to keep you involved. But please hear it. There is no pressure from us to watch them all in an instant. They're there to help you, support you, lead you, guide you and engage with you when you're ready. But with that in mind, we're looking to not only continue to engage you in our live environments, but we're looking to develop our live environments, okay? At the moment, as I say, we provide six and I've already had conversations with some people who feel guilty because they can't engage in all of them because of family, because of work, because of other pressures that are there. And the last thing we want to do is to make you feel guilty. But we certainly do want to keep engaging with you, keep connecting with you and keep developing what we're doing. So in season two, we as a leadership team, we're reviewing our live experiences. Of course, the Sunday morning online experience, that will stay there. But we're reviewing the number of live experiences we provide. We're reviewing, do Liz and I have to lead all of them? Can some other people potentially lead some of the Zoom calls? We're also looking to develop our other ministries. There's so many ministries that we have in the church. And as we know, we can't reopen the building in season two. We don't want those ministries to just be on hold. So the ministry leaders are actually throughout season two looking to develop their ministries to help engage with us. 
Her story has already developed and has gone digital as of June. More ministries will be looking at how we can do that. And I want to encourage you, whatever ministries you're involved in, um, look out for uh, communications either from us or from your ministry leaders about how we're going to keep developing and engaging with you through the different ministries. But don't worry, we're going to keep you updated on all of this, all the time. We don't want you to feel like you're missing anything. But as a church, we're going to continue to engage with you and develop what we have. But more than anything, and this is the last thing I want to say, season two, we want to see us to keep growing. Of course we do. We want to see us to keep engaging. We want to see us to keep developing. But more than anything, and the most important thing is we want to see everybody safe. We still live in a coronavirus world. Some lockdown laws are changing, the, but the virus is still out there. Sadly, the virus is still taking lives in the hundreds each and every day. And we want to see each and every one of you to stay safe, to stay healthy and to stay virus free. Your safety is of the highest importance to us here at Riverside. We will continue to make decisions on how we engage, develop and move forward as a church. But please know Yes, we do miss seeing you all. Yes, we do miss gathering with you. But at no point do we want to put anybody at risk. And the safety of every single person is going to be a leading factor in every decision that we make. We do miss you. We do love you. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for staying alert. Thank you for staying safe. Please keep washing your hands please keep in season two engaging please keep developing as we are continuing to develop but more than anything look after yourselves look after each other wash your hands follow the government guidelines and i can't wait to see you all soon